What happens when you get into debt? You're supposed to go and rob a fucking bank, are you? And you can't. I'm going to struggle to pay this. Or won't pay it back. It doesn't matter what you want, sir. Unfortunately, that's the law. We meet the High Court enforcement agents who are pushed to their limits. Evil! You have to down to hell! Well, I'll smash the window then. It's false imprisonment. Dealing with desperate debtors. Hello? In dramatic situations. We're standing like a big man. Leave it. Talk to me. Talk to Push me. me about. We meet the people who are losing their homes. You can't go anywhere else apart from back in hospital, but that could set, set him, him back. back. And their possessions. The desk are going. <laughs> Everything. Okay. Because whatever happens... High Court enforcement! If you can't pay, they'll take it away. Recent figures reveal that personal debt has reached a record high. One in six adults in the UK now has what can be classified as a problem debt. And one of the most common is rent arrears. Roll, let's roll, let's roll. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are High Court enforcement agents who work across the north of England. Oh, it's a beautiful day indeed. It's 7.30 a.m. They're in Liverpool on their way to evict a family who are behind with their rent. If people don't pay the rent, then uh, they've got to be evicted. The landlord claims he hasn't received anything from them for months. But there's a complication. From what we can read in the notes, one of the, uh, the occupants is classed as vulnerable. It's a child, I believe. Is it a child? Mm. I mean, the case notes say it's a vulnerable child, but that's so wide open, isn't it? It can be wide open, yeah. Vulnerable is a wide umbrella. 47, 49. The landlord's son is there to meet them. We believe there's a vulnerable child. In yes. This. Well, what, do you know the more history about that? Um, just she's before? on a ventilator. Right. Um, so he has a pipe. He's got a mobile machine. He's got oxygen. Yeah. All um, day he said he can move. He can travel. He's okay. good to go. Right. Um, but they're playing the game. He can't move. He's too disabled. Too. That's why they're not going out. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a knock and see if they're open first. If okay. not, Right. Okay. What's the name? Powell, Mark. Although Stuart and Victor know there is a seriously ill child inside the house, the rip gives them no choice but to evict the family immediately. Oh, here we go. Can you come to the door, please? The agents are met by a member of an overnight care team. There's a baby on a ventilator here. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he's put that child in the place of safety. Can you please give me an hour? No, yeah. we, we, we can do that. that okay, that's who no are problem. you, by the way? We're high court enforcement like agents. Oh. We're here now to take over the property. Right, okay, we, we've got a right of possession for the property. You're not going to throw them in the street? Yeah, that, that's, well, we don't throw anyone out on the street, but what we're here to do today is take possession of the property. So we'll be changing locks and they will be evicted today. But you're going to give us an hour or so? Of course we'll. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you want me to come in and talk, Mr no, Bell? Please don't enter this. No. no, no, don't. The reason why we've had, we've stepped out is simply because it is a bit of a shock. So they want to uh, they want to get things arranged and get things sorted, which I understand. I mean, you know, we're all human at the end of the day. We've all got families. Uh, we've got our job to do today, but this is the special case. A few minutes later, the care worker's shift ends and she leaves the house. It's on a ventilator, on life support. Yeah, she? yeah. Just... Well, I, I understand that, but... But what? But what? It's a delicate situation. Stuart wants to explain the process carefully to the family. We'll try and give you as much time as possible, because I know it's not the best situation yeah. at all. all right. So the best thing for you to do now is pack like an overnight bag, something like that. You can come back and get your stuff, or simply just change the locks, yeah. OK? So it's a horrible situation, I, I understand that. He knows we've got an ill baby. Yeah. Um, he knows the situation, he knows we're waiting on the house. Yeah. He's just... Yeah. He, was just, he was just pissed off because we couldn't, we couldn't get out by the yeah. time he wanted us to. There's nothing, nothing I can do. What if we decide that we can't go? You, you, in, in the nicest possible way, yeah. you will be leaving today. 
It was a very difficult situation for me to deal with. You've got to start thinking from the tenant's point of view and not just from the landlord's point of view that there is a child here that is dependent, his life is dependent on what you do and what your actions are. An hour after they first arrived, the agents go back to the house. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, you're all right. Are we, able, are we able to come in? Do you have to? We're sorting yeah. stuff out. We, yeah. we would have to come in. Like I said, we're not going to be intruding. We're simply just going to come in and have a chat, that's all. Once inside, the agents have legal possession of the house. But they're in for a shock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're all right, just uh, pass us all. Yeah, right, we're forward, just then. part of the old hey team that manage Riley's care. Yeah. Sorry, mate, keep out your way. It's all right. Riley is nearly two and needs round-the-clock medical care. He can't breathe on his own and is on constant life support. He lives here with his father, Mark, mother, Claire, and big brother, Callum. He's a beautiful boy, isn't he? Yeah. Lucky to have him. We found out on a 20-week scan that he had a heart problem because right. his heart was back to front, and it's in the centre of his chest. All right. Because um, he's yeah. got a small, one small lung, so obviously it's, it, it hasn't pushed it to where it should have been. Because his heart, yeah, when they're eight weeks old in the, in the womb, the heart's meant to do a 360 degrees turn. Right. And this has only done half. And when he was born, he didn't think he was going to live. He has to have a ventilator to help him breathe. What does the doctor say long term in that? Hopefully, he'll be off it by the time between the age of now and ten. He can go up to the age of ten. I was quite shocked when we walked in and it was a little boy on a life support machine. It's about two years old. Uh, it was it was a big shock and um, emotional, very emotional, to be honest with you. In a situation like that, you do think of your own family, and you also realise how blessed we are. Despite Riley's condition. Legally, the agents must carry out the eviction today. It's a writ of possession for yeah. this property for today. Because yeah. they need this documentation to take it down to the housing association, because they will need to go in, uh, uh, in some kind of emergency accommodation. But rehousing a little boy like Riley isn't going to be easy. He needs plug sockets to run his life support equipment off. That needs testing and safety testing. All that takes about two or three weeks to set up. Yeah, well, going to be able to get that in emergency accommodation. Yeah, so there's absolutely no way to appeal this or to... No, not from a high court level. Riley spent the first 16 months of his life in hospital and only came home six months ago. Mark stopped work to look after him and fell behind with the rent. You have to change all his tapes, change his tubing, medications every so many hours. That is yeah, our yeah, job. Yeah, our job, He's yeah. our life. You can't have a job, basically. He is our job. You can't leave him, cos if that pipe comes off, He'll it's life-threatening. These circumstances are unlike any Stuart has ever faced. We're here to take the property back, but our main concern is the moment. F forget about the house. Main priority is getting the little lad sorted. We're all human at the end of the day. What's all the time? We've got a time limit to be out of Pack a bag. You've got seven clear days from today to come back for the rest of your belongings. The family are now homeless. Riley needs life-saving equipment and round-the-clock care. But the family don't know where they'll be sleeping tonight. Now, the family have to make a crucial decision. As there is little hope of finding emergency accommodation suitable for Riley's life-saving equipment, they have no choice but to admit him back into Alder Hay Hospital. We have to wait for an ambulance to take him into hospital because we can't go anywhere else with him. He can't go he anywhere else apart from back in hospital, but that could set, set him, him back. back. He can stay at home. He doesn't have to go into hospital, but now he has to go into hospital, which is wrong. But moving Riley into hospital means that his brother Callum has to stay somewhere else. And it's split the family up because we've got one child living somewhere else and we've got another child in put back in hospital. And we've got nowhere to go. It, it's the landlord. The landlord has pushed it through to the High Court and what we've turned up to this address, you see. So it's only when you actually get in behind that door, speak to the parents and actually see it for yourself, you might think, ooh. The family knew they would have to move. They were waiting for the council to finish adapting a house suitable for Riley's needs. 
The house will be ready in two days' time, but their landlord wanted them out today. See what I mean? Yeah. See how close we, he yeah. knew that we were? Yeah. And he still had to put us through this? Yep. The agents have no control over when the High Court writs are issued. But just 48 hours could have prevented Riley from having to go back to the hospital and the family being separated. The because landlord knew this. He knew we were waiting on the property. It's just not fair. That someone can actually do that to you, knowing, knowing, the, circumstances. knowing the circumstances that we are going through. I think it's disgusting. I don't know how they're going to sleep at night. You can't meet a little lad like that and, uh, and, and not be affected in any way. He's, he hasn't stopped smiling since we've walked in. He's been bouncing, dancing along to his, to his TV. It's now 2 o'clock, and Riley's ambulance arrives. However, his care team have to make sure they take all of his medication and life-saving equipment, as the locks will be changed as soon as they leave. Two vents. Yeah. Two suction machines. Yeah. One sat monitor. Yeah. One handheld sat monitor. In the bag, OK? Meds. All his meds are in the bag, in the thing. Whoa. What happens now, then? You just need to arrange with us and uh, we can arrange with the landlord when you need to come back and collect the rest of your things. All no. your stuff will be safe and secure, OK? I'm sorry, baby. Good job you don't know. Six hours after they first arrived, the eviction is complete. For Vic and Stuart, it has been the most difficult they have ever carried out. You drive down each street and you don't really see anyone in their houses or anything like that. That You don't really know people's stories or people's lives, but they're on it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and their lives are completely turned upside down. The good news is that he will eventually become off of that life support. It's just at this age, because he's so young, he needs the machine to basically force his lungs to, to, to make it stronger, really. So five years from now, he, he might be running around with, with his brother and, and his mates outside the property, and that's great. You know, that, that is really good news. And so hopefully one day that family will have a normal life again. latest research shows that despite the economic recovery, 15 million families in the UK are financially living on the edge. Another day and another potentially stressful job for Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor. This morning, they're in Birmingham to recover a £3,350 debt owed to a landlord for unpaid rent. <sighs> oh, early start. Early start, Vic. Very early start. Early bird catches the worm and all that. Well, it depends what the worm is, isn't it? The writ instructs Stuart and Vic to collect payment today or remove assets to cover the debt. It's not a bad area, though. Mm. So hopefully when we get there, hopefully there might be a car on the drive, because most of these houses have got big, long drives. But the person named on the writ is not the tenant. It's her father. He agreed to be the guarantor if his daughter fell behind with the rent. Now he's liable for the debt. Ooh, burger bar. Kath's kitchen. Kath's kitchen. And a plate number, which I will do an HPI on right away. There's a car and a mobile kitchen in the driveway. These are assets they could seize if the tenant's father can't or won't pay. Kath's kitchen, no, I'll tell you what, mate, I, could, I, could go for a, I can go for a full breakfast this morning. Maurice. I'm just going to do an HBI, all right? Uh, it's uh, Vic, mate, you're right. Vic checks the car isn't on finance, while Stuart approaches the house. Hello there, sir. We're after Mr. Palmer. Yeah. Is that yourself? Name's Mr. McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent from Direct What's Collection Bailiffs. It's regarding an outstanding High Court writ. I'm in trouble. We're going to court. Yeah. I said, so what's happening with this? You said it's going through court at the moment. Yeah, you know, I've oh been dead to court. How long ago was it? Oh, you, you went up there last week, love, and L offered. Last week? Yeah. I've been up there before. I've been up to the court to <laughs> say that I'm how much I'm willing to pay. Yeah. 
or okay. my, my circumstances. The, the fact of the matter is, because it's been transferred to the High Court, we are now here well, to we've take done control. This we're here. We're here to take control of goods unless payment is made. Oh, what can you take? The, the total amount outstanding is three thousand three hundred and forty-nine pounds no, seventy-five pence. It, it, it is. It's two thousand It's yeah, because it's been transferred to the High Court. It, there's no fees involved. Well, why you would have been informed. We haven't been informed. Yeah, you, you would have been informed. The debt started off as a county court judgment, which can be paid in instalments. But the landlord wanted his money back fast and escalated the case to the High Court. My daughter wanted to rent a house, but I signed as guarantor for her. She didn't. Uh... Keep up with the repayments and so they come she, to she you. missed a month's repayment, yeah. but she got in touch with him, she told him all this and said, oh, look, I haven't got the money that she changed the circumstances her mm. husband's uh, split. And he took us to court. Um, then when he got to court, he said that she'd missed three months. Yeah. Now I know my daughter. My daughter wouldn't miss three months time knowing I'm the guarantor and would have to pay it. Mm. You know, so, uh, yeah. so we went to court. They, they turned around and, and, and found in his favour. Now, I, I've done everything by the book. I've yeah. told them that I can't afford to pay. The High Court would have sent warning to Mr Palmer that he needs to pay immediately. But the agent's visit has come as a shock. The fact of the matter is that payment isn't made. We will have to take control of goods. So you know, you'll, have, you'll have to go back to the, the court. We're not going back to court. We're, we're here now to execute a high court writ. So you, you, you need to, to make a payment. Ours, OK, that's the light that's been sent out on the 12th of the 5th. I'll tell you what, he's okay. a rod bastard. No, I don't so swear, he's a rod bastard. I can, give you, I can give you half an hour to see what you can do with we your graft of funds. We'll, we'll have to take control of the goods then, including, including the assets on the driveway at the moment. That's, that's my son's. That's, that's okay. my wife's. And need, and we need to get ready. proof for that. We need to get proof for that. Well, my son's in Las Vegas at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right, OK, well, what will happen is the vehicles will get removed today. OK, we, we need to see some documentation Sorry, for that. We need to see some, okay. we need to see some proof for that. I, you can establish in the first 10 minutes what's important to them and what's not. And you've got to play on that, unfortunately. You've got to find out what is valuable to them, what they don't want to lose. But everybody's got pressure points. If someone's got a car and he doesn't want to lose his car and it's free of finance, you've got two options. You're either going to pay or we're going to take it away. It becomes clear the defendants can't pay. Yeah, I, I need this ASAP, mate. Seizing the vehicles could be the agent's next option. Vic hears back from the finance check. All right, cheers, thank you. It came back free of finance. So he allowed by law to remove it, unless they can produce paperwork showing that it's in, well, the lady claims it's in her name. So mm. if, she, if she's got a sales invoice or anything like that in her name, we, we won't remove it. You've got a catering trailer there that's worth, in my opinion, maybe £5,000, if it's got the equipment in it. Um, and you've got a Toyota RAV4 there, which, or three plate, you'd probably get about 1,500 quid for, maybe. 1,800 quid at the most. Mr Palmer finds the vehicle's paperwork. It shows his wife is the registered keeper, but it's not proof of ownership. Have you got a sales invoice for this vehicle? Sorry? Have you got a sales invoice? Oh, God. The sales in what we bought it second hour, as you can see, it's not a new car. There isn't any need at all for this. But, you know, we're decent people, we're not tramps. It's Please. rich man versus poor man all over again, and it's it just ain't on. We haven't done anything wrong. He said he's done everything by the book, which is fine, but you need to remember that the client's done everything by the book as well. Looks like a decent gentleman, pensioner, trying to help his daughter out, and then he got stung with a bull. I suggest if you speak with your daughter, see if she's got any funds, considering she that she's the one that's run up the debt in the first place. I've been feeding mm. her because yeah. she hasn't got any money, any money to buy food even. Yeah. Sadly, it's not going to stop with what we're here no, to no, do today. No, no, it's not. There's nothing to do with that, sir. Right. Nothing to do with that at all. They've got a job. They've got a you know, job. Job's worth. It can be heartbreaking, but you'd do anything for your family. I know I would. I would sign on behalf of somebody in my family, regardless of the situation, because it's your family at the end of the day. But people need to remember that you are signing if they don't pay. If they don't pay, you're liable. And you've signed a contract to say that, yes, I will be liable if you do not pay or you default on any of your payments. So I don't understand why it's a shock to people when we turn up at the door and they say, oh, it's a, we only sign guarantor. But that's what a guarantor is. But the only way it's going to get resolved is by making a payment. Somebody needs to make a payment. Somebody. Payment Somebody. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go and rob a fucking bank, are you? 
That's not, that's not me for telling no, you what no, to do, no, sir. You know what I mean? But... All right, you've got your job to do. Okay, so what, what, what I'll do is. Okay, I understand that, sir. You can't take blood from a stone. After 20 minutes at the house, their daughter Sam, who ran up the debt, and her friend Andy arrive. I can people seriously do. I can you seriously do mind we do something like this. We've had a nice morning. I've tried it, they're just not here. You came to. Are you, are you sheriffs? Yeah. yeah. High court. You got high court. Why has he gone to the high court when you're still in negotiations? It's not, it's a CCJ, it's been honoured. The payment has transferred the it to the high court. So what the so it's a CCJ that's been awarded against the defendants. Well, so what? The that, so what the claimant has done is transferred it to the High Court. Tell you what he's in the state of a week. Yeah. From going from making yeah. an offer. We were in the making an offer stage. How much is it? The total amount outstanding is. It was two thousand two hundred, and uh, and now it's all of a sudden it's gone up to three thousand two hundred. Yeah, can you do that? It, it's it, it's on no no to... notification. Stuart and Vic are at gridlock with the whole family. With tensions rising, will they get the £3,000 they came for? His daughter and her friend arrive to back him up. I can people seriously do. Now a simple debt recovery has turned into a standoff. You haven't notified these people that <laughs> yeah. this is going to happen. Letter's been sent out. A letter has been sent out. When was the when letter sent out? Twelfth the fifth. Notice of enforcement was sent to this address. So hang on. So he's kind of gone. He's jumped the gun. Yeah. But you can do. He's jumped the gun. That's, I mean, he's that's took what... a legal stance and he's jumped the gun. Yeah. I wouldn't say jump the gun. The second it's awarded against well, he's, you. He's used, well, he's, he's, used, he's used the law to his. He's used mm -hmm. the law to his advantage. Isn't that what the law's there for? The, law, the, the law's an asset. Uh, if the payment of three thousand three hundred forty-nine pounds isn't made in twenty minutes, we will be taking control of goods. Hang on a minute. Can I have a look at the? Can yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Normally, there's a good cop and a bad cop. Because Stuart is taking the lead of the case, he will be portrayed as the bad cop. I normally try and calm the data down because he won't have a beef with both of us. He will normally focus on one of us and take his frustration out on, on, on that agent. That will give me the opportunity to try and calm him down, normally take him by the arm and just say, let's step aside, you know, let's work this out. It's 3,200 pounds and whatever pennies. If we come to an agreement today, you make some kind of pay. There has to be a payment today. There's no doubt about that. To stop any action from removing vehicles. It's a stalemate. But then the daughter's friend makes a surprising offer. Uh, you, so you can, you're in position to cut a deal. What kind of deal? Amount. What kind of deal? Well, they agreed to paying that in court. Right. I'll give you that right now. No. There needs to be the full amount. If not, it's removal of goods. Right, okay, I'll pay you now. Okay, how, how can you make the payments? Here we go. Do it. Pay the all that now. Okay. Pay the all that now. The family friend has agreed to pay off the debt. This man has took full advantage of this old couple. Sam rented a house off this guy. He was, he was very naughty with the way he's like kippered her up, regards payments, regards damage to the house. She actually done the house out. He's gone after and gone for this debt. But to try and enforce it onto her mum and dad, who are retired people, not good enough. I'll take the notice off the vehicle, eh? I'm just a friend of the family, just trying to keep everybody happy here. So if that's go through, so should we have the signal? I've Can't taken the notice there. off the vehicle. According to us, this is the end. These aren't people who are trying to run and hide. These are people who are trying to deal with things. You know, these are genuine people. These aren't duckers and divers with the dealers. I would have helped them out. They're too proud. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah. Unfortunately. I appreciate your, your level had, sir. Got to be level heavy. All the best, anyway, though, All sir. All the best to yourself. I think he is a genuine guy. Mm. Um, he's trying to help the family out, which is fair play to him. Um, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. I think we got a good result. The case is resolved, and the family's cars are safe, thanks to their daughter's friend. <laughs> Research shows Britain is in the grip of a debt crisis, with families in the UK owing nearly one and a half trillion pounds. And it's the middle classes who are the most likely to be in heavy debt.
High Court Enforcement Agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Del Anglin are in Kent with a writ to collect just over £2,000 owed by a business selling novelty globes, Globy Limited. But first, they must find the right address for its director. So what we've got here is an individual, very difficult to track down. He's got numerous addresses, prior residencies, just messy, evasive. The business owner, David Sinclair, seems to be linked to several addresses. So Brian does some research. 46-year-old David Sinclair, an accountant, his idea was to put a city map on, onto a globe, something he realised had not been done before. The result is the Globy, and it is now selling in thousands across the UK and around the world. The father of four sold two properties to allow him to invest £400,000 in the project, but yet can't pay an original debt of £2,000 to the claimant. It's a bloody joke, isn't it? Brian finds the Globes are being sold through another company, Globy International. But with no address, Dell turns detective. Glenny. Yeah, so good afternoon. Um, do you, can you put collages on, 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 on Globes? Collage? I, I think what? Well, what, what's, pictures. What, what pictures. We can do, yes. Um, where could I come to see, um, see uh, your works? Uh, well, you can see them all online. I mean, we don't actually have a shop ourselves. So if I wanted to, where would I send the details to? If I wanted to um, send you um, an order or something, just for, it might be a one-off. It was a present for my mum's birthday. It's her 80th, so... Well, you could, I mean, by all means, I mean, if you drop me an email of, of what you want, and I'll get a costing for you. Okay, dokie, okay, thanks very much. That's all right. Okay, cheers. Hey, thank you, bye-bye. He -bye. didn't give anything away there, did he? Uh, that was a bit clever. Mr. Sinclair still seems to be in business, but with no confirmed address, Brian calls the office. Hello, mate. Yep. OK, we're off to Globy Limited. Just spoken to him on the phone. After a search, a colleague unearths an address. Oh, after all this time. <laughs> you just made my day. So the office is handy sometimes. Very much Let's so. Let's get down there, come on. Let's do it. OK. Chocks away. The plot thickens. The agents arrive at what they hope is Mr. Sinclair's home. It's getting the odd. Brian and Dell are allowed to enter the property through an open door to deliver the writ. Hello? Hello? High Court Enforcement? Hello, is Mum in? Hello? Hello? Mr. Sinclair? Yeah. High Court Enforcement agent, sir. Hi. I'm here on behalf of DCBL. Yeah. We've got a High Court writ. Which I'm, you're obviously aware Which about. Maybe, yeah, it's it. Here to collect two thousand three hundred twenty-three pounds and twenty pence. It's That's all right. in dispute. So yeah. the amount does need to be paid. Well, it can't be paid because there's nothing belong. The company has ceased to trade. That's it. What are you trading as now then? I'm not trading as anything. If you check on the website, it's still showing. Website, still active. showing on their active proposed to um, proposed to off. Off, correct. Well, well still trading. Still, still trading then, isn't it's it? It's not trading. Mr. Sinclair claims that because Globy Limited has ceased to trade and is about to be dissolved, he's not liable for the debt. The agents want to find out more about the company Dell called earlier, Globy International. Well, yeah, Globy International as well. Globy International mm -hmm. was a company that my wife set up mm -hmm. at the beginning of 2012 mm -hmm. when my wife and I temporarily separated. She got money to set up a business which she did. Mm -hmm. My business. Globy Limited, I lost my father, I lost my house. We then decided we're going to try and give it another go because we've got the children. Mm -hmm. But Globy Limited has gone. I understand that, sir. Yeah. I, look, I, let's, I just want to cut to the chase, OK? When I phoned you, we spoke about whether or not you could provide me with something, right? And the indication was yes. So let us cut the nonsense, yeah. get down to the nitty-gritty, yeah. right? Because you would, been, you would have been quite happy to have done business with me you I... was, it, was it you that yes, it was me. It was yes. me. Mm. So, therefore, all this nonsense about it not trading and all this is rubbish. No, you it's not. It. You look, if it's... I'd put an order in, yeah. I'd have got one from you. Globy Limited has gone. So limited. Well, well that's how you answered it, Globy Limited. Or because Globy, Globy, Globy is the logo. I prefer to have a look around your house and see if there is anything here belonging to the company. Is okay. that OK? Yeah, you can. You can get round through the back Let's here. have a look, then, sir, because we're wasting time, really. Feel free to have a look. I'll leave the door open. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, I'm just going to phone my wife. No problem, that's fine. 
Dell believes that David Sinclair is still trading. If he can't or won't pay, the agents can seize business assets to the value of the debt. He's got globes here. What they sell for, do you think? Hey. I just need receipts for the, for, the, for the stuff, then, that's it. Well, I don't know what you want to do. There's a few bits and pieces of a globey there. The agents find some leftover stock, the result of a business venture gone wrong. Well, I had a prototype of our first globe back in 2009, I think. And I went to John Lewis, and I badgered to get into John Lewis to, to, for them to see me for, for, for ages. And eventually they let me in. And I remember the guy. And he said, we'll probably, we'll probably place a first order for about 10,000 units. And I remember walking back to Victoria train station. I was walking on air. I thought, fabulous. And then the economy imploded. They did order, they ordered 500. I probably got carried along with it a bit too much, which subconsciously, I suppose, was greed thinking, you know, we're going to make a few million quid overnight here. But the unused stock is not enough to cover the debt. Mr Sinclair, is there a reason why you don't want to pay this woman her money? Now, she had invoiced me over the course of a couple of years, roughly, I, I guess, 20 grand, and she got paid about 18 of it. And the reason, as I said, that the rest, the other two grand or whatever it was, didn't get paid was because the company had ceased, and the reason it had ceased was, A, because, you know, I lost my house. If, mm, I, if mm, I'd had mm, funds, mm, I'd have paid mm, it. Mm. You know, I lost my house. Uh, yeah. The, the personal problems I had, the company had ceased to trade. Mr. Sinclair's wife and children arrive home. Hello. Nice dog. What's your financial situation at the moment? I've got a pop. Right. I don't disbelieve you. I've got, I've, got, I've got no reason. I've got no reason to disbelieve. I don't, I don't disbelieve. The agents now have to make a decision. Can I just have a quick moment, with my colleague? Just come see, um, if you could just go in there, that'd be great. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Cheers. Um, What's your thoughts? Yeah. Um, because of the, yeah, the company issue. Yeah. yeah. It's he's paid eighteen thousand pounds from a twenty thousand pounds debt. So he's not. He's not. He's, a, he's not an evader. He's paid. It was twenty grand. He's paid eighteen. So he's not. An, he's not evader. The company just ceased to trade. Yeah. With Mr. Sinclair's company, Globe Limited, close to being dissolved, and not enough company assets to pay off the debt, Brian and Dell decide not to pursue it. There's a couple of globes in here, there's a couple in there. It's not going to reach two and a half thousand pounds. The failure of the business has had a major effect on Mr. Sinclair. Six, seven years ago, I probably had an A1 credit rating, uh, had a lovely house, swimming pool, five bedrooms, acre of land, very pleasant, very comfortable. Uh, probably worked about three and a half days a week. Then this idea took over, and um, obviously the whole thing's imploded. And my wife and I were basically working 25 hours a day, eight days a week to resurrect things. Unfortunately, the claimant on this one, it's going to be difficult for them to get their money because the company's not trading anymore. You can't get blood out of a stone sometimes, so it's just unfortunate. But, you know, he's a nice chap. He's tried. He's paid the majority of the debt, and he just can't pay the last amount because, you know, the, the company wasn't trading. I, I was an accountant. I know people that they try and close companies down and then set another one up and with the stock and all this sort of thing. I know that goes on. But it wasn't us, you know, I've lost virtually... Well, I have lost everything. The only thing I haven't lost is my family. Despite their determination, Brian and Dell have come away empty-handed. More than half of new small businesses in the UK are failing to survive longer than five years. Top of the list of worries is cash flow, with 43% saying they're currently experiencing problems. Chesham, Buckinghamshire. Right, what we're we doing now, Dad? We're going on a revisit, aren't we? Brian and Dell have a writ to collect a debt of over £4,000 from a business that recycles second hand airline seats. Yes, it looks like we're going to SD Aviation Aircraft Interior Recycling Limited. It's not the first time Brian has tried to collect the debt. Yeah, Kevin and I um, attended this one. This was um, got lots of aircraft seats and parts of planes. Okay. Which are quite, um, quite valuable. 
the money is owed to a supplier that the business failed to pay. I'll just tell him that the sun's shining, please don't make the thunder and lightning come. <laughs> <laughs> On their first visit, the debtor, Aaron Day, claimed he couldn't pay. This time, Brian and Dell want results. The warehouse is full of potentially valuable aircraft seats. They could seize to offset the debt. The agents find Mr. Day sitting in his office with a colleague. Afternoon. You right? I'm good. How are you, sir? Yeah, good, thanks. High yeah. Court Enforcement Agents, you know that, yeah? Yeah. I understand there was an issue last week because, uh, I don't know, cash flow or whatever it was. Exactly, yes. OK. It's got to be paid today. I haven't got it here, mate. No, we're going to have to seize assets then. You've got to pay it. We said you were going to pay it Friday and then Monday the latest. Yeah, I know, but it's just no, been a minute. Can anyone, can anyone help you with it to get it paid today? And then you pay him back? Anyone at all? No, I can't do that. I've, I've exhausted my channels. The so bank won't help you, then? No. no. No, I've got this guaranteed 15 grand coming in. I know that. It's just not hitting the time frame. Mr Day says he's waiting for a £15,000 payment from HM Revenue and Customs. Do you know if the HMRC have actually sent out the check? Yeah, they have. The HMRC system says it's on it's, its way. Um, if you can't pay this today, we're going to look to take control of goods, get right. some trucks in and remove them. Mr Day claims he can't pay. But then he makes the team an offer. Yeah, you can you can take uh, uh, four of those seats, and that is no, well, 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 grand. I mean, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert. We'll, we'll have a look around and we'll determine yeah. what we're taking. When you explain to her that, that you know you're going to take control of their goods and possibly remove them, you really see what they're made of. Um, and what I mean by that is, you'll see the individuals that will scrimp and scrape make that telephone call, try everything tooth and nail to prevent that action. Okay. Yeah? What would you take today? Everything. The contract's with British Airways. BA's assets. Cool. So you wouldn't be able to touch that. So why is, why is, your, why is BA's assets in here? What's the contract? What's the it's conditions? The contract is I buy those. Right. And they're holding here as soon as I pay them, they're mine. So it, it is technically, legally, underneath the contract, BA's stock until I pay for it. After first offering them some stock, Mr Day now backtracks claiming the airline seats aren't his after all. Dell is suspicious. Right, Brian, the issue is the goods are his. Believe me, right? We take those goods. It's his responsibility. He still has to pay for them. He still has it's to like a loan, isn't it? That's his issue. That's not our issue. With no offer to pay, Brian decides that seizing assets today is the only way to clear the debt. Uh, I don't want to wait any longer. Uh, and if you can't pay it today, I'm going to take control of goods inside this warehouse. Apparently, it's quite, um, it's quite expensive stuff. £150,000 worth of stock in there. Well, I'm not an expert. I don't have a bloody clue what I'm looking at. Brian calls a colleague, Paul Bowhill, for advice. Hello. Paul, it's Brian. How are you doing? All right, thank you, sir. I'm in, a, I'm in a place at the moment, commercial property, and they deal with plain spare parts. Um, I'm just basically calling up regarding, you know, the value of this kind of stuff. It's such a restricted market. Yeah. I would value the stock at less than 10%. Uh, less than 10%, yeah. So, in other words, if you're looking to recover 100 grand, you'd need a million pounds worth of stock. Fine. So, if I've got a four grand debt, what are we looking at? 40 grand. So I'd the... really go over the top because, uh, because it's such specialised stuff, hypothetically, it could end up being sold for scrap. So, basically, you're talking about clearing them out then, really? All right, that's great. Cheers, Paul. It seems that while the stock might be valuable to Mr Day's business, it could be hard to sell. And Brian has no idea how much the seats might fetch at an auction. It's not looking good on, on, on the following basis. Um, because your goods are quite specialised items, we might not be able to sell it at all. Um, and that comes to the point, for £4,000 debt, we'd look to clear out most of your stuff here today. If I can't get it paid in half an hour, I'm going to start calling the Sir HGB lawyers to come here and do so. The deadline is set. The next 30 minutes could make or break Mr Day's business. You don't run a business like this without having some form of contingency fund. You're just going to have to dig into it. But Mr Day then presents the agents with a bombshell. He says his colleague has spoken to the claimant directly, who's given him more time to pay. Don't worry, mate. Don't worry. Well, as it is. Don't worry. Um, Right, he's just spoken to the guy and he's going to ring your office if you can just give us five days and have to wait. Go, I'll make a call to the office and let him know that they're trying to get hold of him. Just need the five days, man. Let me call him now. Okay. 
Brian calls the office to check Mr. Day is telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. All right, all right, all right. That's cool. Cheers. Bye. It's weird. He's to explain to our office that he hasn't made no such agreement with you, and he's going to call you back now yeah. and tell you you've got to deal with us. So that's, I'm just relaying the message. Listen, don't shoot the messenger. Brian's been told that the claimant hasn't made any offer of a five-day extension. Well, someone's done in a porcupine, aren't they? Interesting. He speaks with forked tongue. Now we can't trust anything he says. But the threat of losing all his stock has spurred Mr Day into action. An associate has agreed to pay off some of Mr Day's debt for him. Um, I'll show you to my cousin. Are you in the country? Is he, is he paying card, is he? Hello? Is he paying my card? Is he paying my card, is he? He wants the bank details. We want it. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do it now. Mr Day's associate decides to pay the office directly. Brian calls to check the amount. Four grand's paid. We spent another 120 pounds, 61 pence. They'll pay that. The associate has wiped out most of Mr Day's debt in just one payment. Now Dell needs to get Mr Day to pay the balance. Got it, haven't you? Four grand we have, so we just need 120 pounds and 61p. Joking. What about 60 quid in my account? That's how broke I am. I'm just about to make it. Yeah. Anyway, that was the shit. 120 pounds and 61p. Mr. Day now asks another colleague to pay the remaining 120 pounds. Your payment has been made. There's a confirmation. That's from me, UK Recycling IT Limited. We should wait for that to hit and then we'll be at your It's still quite paid as well, so it should be within the hour or so. Thanks to his associates, Mr. Day's business is safe. The end to a debt that he didn't contest. I should have gone to court, um, and the reason I couldn't go to court because on that particular morning I had two boys at home that were sick and my wife wasn't there. If I'd gone to court, I would have won, but because I didn't attend court, it was viewed in the favour of uh, the claimant. Um, so that's my fault for not going to court. It's as simple as that. OK, well done, Brian. Yeah. And in just an hour and a half, Brian and Dell have got what they came for. Next time, Steve and Paul meet a tenant who won't budge. Hello. The first thing they do is, once they see us... Good morning. ..they break down in tears. Brian and Dell's patience is pushed to the limit. We're not idiots, you know, and we know what's probably gone on. All I want is the truth of the matter, and now we're getting somewhere. And Kevin turns detective. Double-level word he's saying to me. He just lied to me since the minute I walked in here.